I'm here with the crew at Cervello, and I'm speaking with Mike Trigonitis, the head, I guess, manager for the P3 project. And Mike, why don't you introduce the people that are with you? Uh, okay, we've got uh, Will Chan here, he's a composites engineer. He was involved with the uh, development on the P3. And uh, Mark Remnick, who was is the industrial designer. And he was involved with basically all of the design work on the, the P3. Uh, so, um, how long has everyone been at Cervello, actually? Uh, I've been here for five years. Um, three years for me. And how about five, you? Five years as well. So, that's quite a bit of knowledge and wisdom packed, packed in there. Um, Mike, so, when did that, should that initial new P3 project come up? How long ago was that? Uh, it was pretty much when we finished the, the P5, we were, you know, we rolled right into this, this project. So we're always moving into new projects. Uh, we always have quite a few on the go at any one time, but this one started basically right after the, uh, the P5, which I think is pretty obvious that from the uh, appearance of the bike that that was the case as well. So. Um, I think the P3 having been such a popular bike and still out doing the bike count in Kona pretty much by itself, all the other brands, that is, you know, obviously it's a sales number question when eventually you have to evolve, so that's not a question of engineering, but that still brings up a challenge because you know something is very popular, now you have to do something that outdoes it. Is that something you enjoy? And I would like to hear everybody on this, or is that kind of a bit scary. Uh, I'll go first, I guess. Uh, I mean, we we always want to challenge ourselves uh, and always want to be working on something that's got some aspect of it that's beyond what we've done before. We don't just like to uh, just do a, a slight evolution, I guess, on our on our products, at least in our in the, as an engineer side of things. Uh, so yeah, definitely, uh, the more challenge, the better for us and. Uh, you know, sometimes you fail, sometimes you succeed. It's it's all it's all good in the end because you always learn from it. So, um, any thoughts from you guys? Uh, from my from my standpoint, it's because uh, I cover a lot of the development and the manufacturing aspects of the frame. So uh, it was a good opportunity to uh, also integrate the manufacturing aspects into the design um, because we know that it is a, a high production number of frame. And also, um, the producibility and the quality um, is something that we're always looking to improve. Um, now, looking back, I mean, it's been, I guess, about two years, I guess. I would say that's probably a rough time frame for that P3 development. Mm -hmm. What was, I guess, you've learned quite a bit from the P5. Um, and as we, yes, when you look at the frame closer, you can clearly see that. But what were some of the challenges specifically to that? because obviously price point is going to be one that you have to consider. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably one of the biggest things that, uh, that made it a bigger challenge, uh, trying to uh, hit all the, uh, the engineering uh, targets, but also trying to hit the cost. I mean, you've got, your, uh, you've got to make it hit the quality standards, hit the, the technical standards, and also hit the cost. And, Hitting all three at the same time is probably the hardest thing to do. Uh, that's where Will came in uh, and basically working with Mark, um, they uh, they worked on developing it so that you know we, we looked at design for manufacture. And Will was basically uh, on the P5 for uh, during development as well. So I think uh, I think one of the big challenges was that um, you can see just from the frame shape alone that it resembles the P5. The P5. It's a much more expensive frame to produce. It uses much more expensive materials. Um, you know, on the P3, a lot of our challenges were to how to improve the performance of the old P3 while also incorporating those large frame shapes, that aerodynamic frame shapes, um, while also uh, making it easy to manufacture and improve upon those stiffness uh, numbers at the same weight of the old P3. Um, obviously, I haven't seen all the detailed numbers, but from what I understand, the new P3 is stiffer and and actually more aerodynamic than its predecessor. And I guess 
you can't really ask for much more than that. So, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, pretty good bike all around. You think so? I guess you've seen most of that. You can actually see ahead of time mm. in before you actually go to the tunnel. But then when you go to the tunnel with the the bike and project, and you see that the numbers you have in mind are validated, is that is that like having birthdays over and over again? <laughs> well, it's uh, it's it. It definitely uh, helps, that's for sure, because we, we don't have to go back to the drawing board. Um, we, I mean, our process has changed a lot uh, with CFD being deeply, uh, deeply involved in our in our everyday process now. Um, <clears throat> we don't even really wait for the wind tunnel uh, to to move forward with our design at this point. Um, the wind tunnel is used for validation more right. than uh, more than uh, testing because it costs so much money to to go in there. Not that CFD doesn't cost money, but uh, but I mean we uh, yeah the wind tunnel validated what the CFD told we, we already knew from the CFD, so it was you know sort of a sigh of relief when you uh, do get the same result again because it is still a, a learning game with the, uh, the wind tunnel and CFD uh, process. We're always learning there, so yeah, it's definitely a, a great feeling when it when it hits its targets. But we weren't we weren't finished when we hit the wind tunnel because we. Uh, you know, we get it in the wind tunnel before we've actually got a, a production bike made. So we still had to hit the weight and the stiffness and all the rest of the targets that we had uh, for the bike. So our job was really starting on the manufacturing side after we knew what we hit in the wind tunnel. Um, you mentioned CFD a couple times, and for some of our readers, listeners who are not that familiar with the, that term, can you briefly explain in somewhat layman's terms what that is? It would definitely be layman's terms. Uh, well, it's computational fluid dynamics. So uh, it's basically taking all of the equations uh, used in, uh, in calculating uh, aerodynamic drag and putting it into, uh, into the computer to, uh, to run it all a lot faster and, and to simulate the, the results for, uh, for the drag in the computer. But that's really basically how the last few bikes, that's how the P5 was developed, that's probably how uh, R5 and how far back does it go in terms of model range? Uh, it started on the S5, I'd say. Um, that's uh, actually when Ivan first started working here as well, Ivan Sidorovich, who's our aerodynamicist. He started around the time when we were working on the S5. So it's interesting that some of the features on that bike also made their way onto, onto this bike as well, which... Uh, which, I mean, Mark's involvement on the S5, he actually designed the S5 as well. Um, and he works closely with Yvonne on, uh, on making sure that the knowledge Yvonne has transfers its way onto, uh, onto the model itself. Right, I mean, I guess one of the things is this. Go Sorry, ahead. I was going to say that the uh, S5 and the P5 had a lot of learnings during the R&D period. And, you know, I learned a lot while working with Yvonne. And, uh, it gets easier, and especially with the, it, you see how, how much of the P5 is on the P3. So it becomes very effective. In terms but, but, of as, but as Mike mentioned, there's also parts from the S5, like the, the way the rear brake attaches. And what other features that come, came over from the S5, actually? Parts of the S5 made it to the P5, and parts of the P5 made it to the P3. So it's evolving in all the learnings we do uh, throughout each project, we can uh, apply them to every new project. And it's it's uh, I mean, with the brake not being under the BB on the uh, on the P3, uh, putting it back on the seat stays, that we took a lot of the learnings from the uh, the S5 and applied them to this model. So we we do quite the research we do. There's a lot of stuff we do leave on the table <clears throat> that obviously we can't put on every single bike when we're designing it. But uh, you know, it's always there. The knowledge is in is is ours. So we we basically can apply it to our uh, our next models, and uh, you know, things with the the P3 where we use the S5, it's actually beyond even what the S5 has. We've improved on on the S5. So, so whatever we learn, uh, it doesn't always make it onto the actual bike, but the learnings remain, and we keep them. You know, either stored in our, in our minds or in our books, and we pull out the knowledge whenever we need.
for whatever application. So the P3 is a slightly different application, and there are certain differences on it. Watch. You can see now. So theoretically, what you have learned now on the S5, the P5, and the P3 may be found on the P6, or whatever it may be. Exactly. <laughs> you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever it may be. Um, any final thoughts um, from you guys on the, on the new bike? I mean, like, are you happy when you see it, or is that is that kind of like you're already on to the next thing and you're too busy with what's next? Well, I wanted to mention that it was a challenge to uh, keep the heritage of the P3, respecting the P3, and at the same time, uh, building off of the P5 and its success and how uh, fast it is. Uh, but overall, personally, I really uh, enjoy how it turned out, and I think it uh, really pushed forward Cervelo's design language. Uh, for me, it's, I mean, I've been involved with <clears throat> quite a few projects here, and basically every time we, uh, we work on another one, it's just, there's a relief when it's finished and you can move on to the next one. You're always, in some cases, I'm working on two or three at the same time, so in terms of managing projects. Um, so, the launch project is a, is a good feeling. And, uh, yeah, the P3 definitely was a was a good feeling because we we did a uh, you know, honestly the team just we did a really good job on it. You know, <laughs> to be honest, we uh, in terms of what we were trying to do internally, uh, we hit we hit our goals and hopefully everybody agrees that it's a it's a really good bike. But uh, we're pretty proud of it, so uh, you know it's uh, definitely was a good feeling to to finish that one. Well, listen, we appreciate your time and let you go back to work because I know you have other projects on, on your mind or on your computer desk, so we let you run. Thanks again, and we'll catch you later. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.